Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video, and I'm finally going to be doing the ranking, or I actually decided to do a tier list, and I'll explain it in a little bit, um, for all of the Spider-Man and Spider-Man related movies. Now, as you can probably see, just to get this uh, done right off the bat, yes, I got the new setup finally done. That's what caused this delay in the video. In videos, well, I was gonna record this video yesterday. Um, but I had a difficult time making it, so I decided to do it today instead. Um, and yeah, so here's the new setup. Um, I do like it a lot better. It gives my uh, room a lot more room. It is a, is a loft bed and then a desk underneath. Um, and so, yeah, just tell me what you guys think in the comments. Um, and just so you know, there might be rearrangements in the future. So this isn't like the permanent look. It could uh, change in the future. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of what it's going to look like uh, now. Um, so you kind of got an idea. Um, so yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments. Give me any suggestions for new videos as always. And um, I'm going to be watching the new Transformers movie tonight. Uh, so expect a review for that. And then going into next week, we got The Flash, which is obviously going to be a huge movie coming out. And we got Elemental, which I'm still waiting for the reviews to see if I want to watch that one or not. Uh, but if the reviews are looking good, then I will give that one uh, a, or I will give that one a watch. Uh, so yeah, that's what's going to be coming up in the future, and I think that's all the announcements I need to make. Let's get straight into this tier list. So I thought a tier list would be fun and better uh, for this, just because there's a, <laughs> a lot of Spider-Man and Spider-Man related movies. So this is going to include the Sam Raimi trilogy, the Amazing Spider-Man movies. The MCU trilogy, or as of right now, it's a trilogy. Um, the animated uh, Spider-Mans, um, the two Venom movies, and Morbius. So all of the Spider-Man related Marvel movies is what is going into this tier list today. And I believe it is 13 of them. And there are five tiers. So we got the top tier, the S tier, which is going to be pizza time. Pizza time. Um, then we got the A tier, which is great. Uh, the B tier, which is fun but flawed, I think there's a lot of those types of movies in this, uh, um, in this category, or in, in this group. Um, Underwhelming, and Your Trash Brock. Your Trash Brock. And I think we all know it's gonna go there. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Um, first we got Spider-Man 2002. Um, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, the original one. Um, I'm gonna put it in, I know most people are probably leaning towards the S tier, I'm actually going to put this one in the great tier. I don't think this one is all that amazing, all that incredible, and I think that has a lot to do with how I was introduced to this movie. Uh, I, I always, I always like, I always enjoyed when I was little Spider-Man Two and Spider-Man Three better. I always thought this one was kind of boring, but now obviously I understand movies a lot better and things like that, and I've come to respect this movie a lot more. So it's not because I hate on the Sam Raimi movies or anything like that. I actually did. Even though I'm pretty young, grew I actually grow up, grew up on the Sam Raimi movies. Those are the ones that I first watched, and I was confused because I was still young at the time when the Amazing Spider-Man's came out. Having watched these ones and thinking, wait, what are they doing with the franchise and everything like that? So it was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I've gone to respect this movie a lot more over the years. I think without the success of this movie and the success of the rest of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. I don't think, you know, the MCU would probably be as popular, or maybe it wouldn't even have started in the, in the first place. I think this movie is what started um, kind of that super, you know, lead it up to um, the MCU and the good era of, of uh, superhero movies. It's still got some of those pre-MCU uh, vibes to it, um, but they, they did it just right in this movie, unlike any other movie that was... At the time that came pre-MCU, you know, you had movies like Blade, um, you had the early 2000s Hulk, and Ghost Rider, which all didn't do too well at the time. But Spider-Man, because he was such a popular character, <clears throat> and such a well-renowned character in Marvel, uh, it worked really well, and I think Sam Raimi brought something really, really great to, to, uh, to Spider-Man. And, uh, yeah, that's why I give a lot of respect to this movie, although I don't think it's all that great. I think that um, Green Goblin is a, is a good villain. He's not my favorite villain, but I do like William Defoe's performance. Obviously, he what he brings to that character is something that I think only he can do and only make believable with him going crazy and insane in the movie and things like that. There's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> 
there's a lot of that, um, like, like I said, pre-MCU and, like, early 2000s vibe to it, especially at the beginning of the movie with, like, all the high school scenes and things like that. I, I there, there is a, a bit of nostal- nostalgia there. It's, it's really, really, um, interesting to see that, you know, looking back at that now. Um, yeah, so overall, I think this is a solid, uh, Spider-Man movie. I think maybe the build-up to, um, to Green Goblin and all that is quite slow just because, they ha- they obviously have to deal they also you know they have to deal with a villain while at the same time our Spider-Man superhero hasn't been developed yet so we have to do the him getting bit by the spider and then seeing all these changes and things like that and then we finally get to the villainous arc and things like that so i think that's why i didn't enjoy this as much is because the build up is pretty slow to when we actually get to the action and things like that um but uh yeah, uh, I think this is a solid movie. It's just not as good as other people might believe it is. So for me, it goes in the great tier. Next up, we got Spider-Man 2, which this one I think is what people... Are, I think what most people... I w- I'm going to put this where most people would probably put the first Spider-Man. I'm putting this up in pizza time. I think this is the best one out of the trilogy, personally. Um, I really like Spider-Man 2. I know there's some people who don't enjoy the the like su- the subplot in the middle of the movie where he loses his powers and then has to gain them back and gain back motivation and kind of and kind of get back to being Spider-Man again but I actually really really like that I think it's interesting how he loses his powers and kind of goes in this in this uh in this how do you want to say it kind of at, at this very low point where he has very very little motivation self-esteem um, he's still thinking about Uncle Ben, and, um, you know, he, he kind of wants, you know, revenge a little bit, he's thinking about his death, and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, after a while of just being this normal guy, he realizes that, hey, you know, the city does need me, I need to get back to this, um, and I need to stop, you know, Doc Ock, and all that, um, so I thought, I thought, I actually liked that subplot, I know some people didn't like that, but I actually like that, um, Doc Ock is actually my favorite villain in the Sam Raimi, tr- tr- Sam Raimi trilogy and probably in the entire uh, Spider-Man f- franchise and all the Spider-Man movies and things like that. It's pretty close probably with Vulture maybe, but um, I really do like Doc Ock, of course. Um, I think there's a lot of great action sequences, especially for the time that this movie came out, especially that train sequence and them climbing up the skyscrapers and things like that and all that kind of stuff. Uh, is really, really great, and it's it still looks really, really great to this day, so I really like um, some of those action sequences in there. Um, so yeah, overall, Spider-Man 2, it has a lot of great emotion. This is a very emotional movie. Um, I, I, I do like the, the subplot, although some people may not. I like Doc Ock. Overall, I think this is probably one of the best um, superhero movies for me. And probably gonna remain as the best, um, or, or my favorite Spider-Man movie out of this entire tier ranking. We got Spider-Man Three, and this one is definition definitionally fun but flawed. Uh, when I was little, and I first watched the th- three original Spider-Man movies, the Sam Raimi ones, um, Spider-Man Three was always the one that I enjoyed the most, and I think it is probably the most enjoyable. It is very very fun when you have all these different villains and especially the final act probably you know the most enjoyable part of the entire trilogy i think they did they did build it up pretty good but obviously this movie does have its flaws obviously you had the conflict between sam raimi and i believe it was his it was like a co-director or an executive producer who had disagreements on what villain they should do and i believe sam raimi was very outspoken about not liking the venom character in this movie and so he was more on the sandman side whereas the other guy the co-director executive producer i'm not exactly sure was on the venom side um so obviously there is a bit too much for i think there's a little bit too much um source material in this movie um, where you kind of have, like, half a story for each villain. It's, it doesn't feel like a complete story for, you know, both of them. Um, especially the Venom character. I think they did a lot better with the Sandman character, but even him, you know, it kind of, I, I think if they would have had a whole movie to do Sandman, I think this movie could be really great. I think it could be probably the best one out of the trilogy, but because he had that Venom character, I think it made it very, 
very problematic and and flawed. But overall, I think this is a really enjoyable movie. I think on the flip side to the Venom character, I really do like the symbi symbiote suit and how that changes Peter in funny ways and also in serious ways. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of the emo Parker, Bully Maguire stuff. Obviously, at the time, very weird for everybody. Everybody was very confused at that, and now it's a huge meme. Everybody loves it, uh, which I find very interesting. Um, so I I'm a big, I'm big a fan of the symbiote suit side to it. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of fun to be had in this film, especially in the final acts. But even before that, uh, you have quite a few good action sequences. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Harry lo or losing his memory and then kind of becoming sort of a villain and then um, eventually, you know, comes back, uh, helps uh, Peter Parker and Spider or uh, Peter Parker slash Spider Man and the final act and sacrifices himself at the ending of the movie. I'm not a huge fan of that subplot. Um, but overall, like I said, this movie has a lot of flaws, but I think it's very enjoyable. Um, and I think it gets a little bit too much slack than most uh, than than needed. So it's gonna go in the fun but flawed tier. Next up we got the amazing Spider Man. Just like the Spider Man two thousand two, um this one I've gone to respect more over the years. At first, I thought this was a very much a black sheep. I was always so used to the Sam Raimi trilogy. So looking at the Amazing Spider-Man and the Amazing Spider-Man 2, it just always was very very strange to me. But now we have so many different Spider-Man characters and all that. I've kind, of, you know, I've kind of gotten to respect all these different Spider-Man characters and their different stories and things like that. So the Amazing Spider-Man I'm going to put it in the great tier below the Spider-Man, uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Um, but I think this is still a really solid uh, Spider-Man movie, superhero movie, Marvel movie, whatever you want to say. Um, I think the chemistry, I'm, I'm sure most of you have probably heard this, the chemistry between Emma Stone and um, Andrew Garfield is really, really good. Probably the best chemistry out of any of the other Spider-Man couples in you know the Spider-Man uh, franchise, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think they did a really good job on the Spider-Man suit. I still prefer the Sam Raimi Spider-Man suit, but I think this one does look really, really good visually. Um, there's some good action sequences, good visuals. Um, Lizard, not the best villain, probably at the lower end for me, but I think he's okay. Um, overall, The Amazing Spider-Man, I think it's just a really solid Spider-Man movie, and I think over the years, uh, people have gone to respect this movie more and more, and I think that's really, really good. So, it's gonna go at the great tier. Not so good, though, is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the follow-up to The Amazing Spider-Man, and it's really, really unfortunate, because I think, much like with, uh, Spider-Man 3, I think, had they had time to space things out, I don't know what got mixed up with this movie, um, and same thing with the Sam Raimi trilogy, I'm not sure why they weren't able to go through with making Spider-Man 4, um, but there, I, there was supposed to be an Amazing Spider-Man 3, and I think had things gone correctly, I think the Amazing Spider-Man trilogy would be a lot more respected, and I think the Amazing Spider-Man 2 would not be as it is, uh, as it is viewed, and it is not viewed very, very greatly. Most people would probably put it in this bottom tier, your trash Brock, but I'm gonna put it in the underwhelming tier. When I saw the trailer for this movie at the at first, there was actually a pretty good bit of excitement for this movie, at least for me. I don't know for other people or anything like that, but it looked like it could have turned out to be a really, really good sequel, but kind of had similar issues to Spider-Man 3 where I believe there was there had to be some kind of mix up there, and there is just and there ended up just being way too much um stuff in this movie because, you know, probably the directors had to make some kind of compromise, much like they did with Spider-Man 3. And so you have, on like, even more villains than what Spider-Man 3 has. I mean, in Spider-Man 3, you have Venom and Sandman as the main villains, and arguably Green Goblin kind of turning into a villain um, in a part of the movie. And this one, you got Green Goblin, you got Electro, you got Rhino in a portion of the movie, like, towards the beginning of the movie. Um, and I believe there, there might have been another one, I'm not sure, but just way too, way too much, um, and yeah, like I said, it's it's very unfortunate. I'll, I'll tell you what I do like about this movie and what I don't like. I think the reason why this goes at the underwhelming tier for me is because I actually do like the Electro story arc in this movie, whereas some people 
they don't like any of the story arcs. They don't like the Green Goblin story arc. They don't like the Electro story, story arc. Some people like the Green Goblin story arc, and they don't like the uh, Electro story arc, and so they would probably still have it in the same spot as me. But I think most people do not like much about this movie besides the Gwen Stacy death, which is pretty, you know, <laughs> pretty grim. Um, and that's why most people would probably put it down here. But for me, I actually do like the Electro story arc. I'm not as big of a fan as the Green Goblin story arc. Never was a fan of that. But I actually do like the Electro character in this movie. He has a very unique, um, he's a, he's a very unique character in this in this movie, uh, in in the Spider-Man franchise as a whole. Um, I think had they had Amazing Spider-Man three, had they gone through with that, I think the Gwen Stacy death could have been even better. Obviously, it was a very emotional scene, but I think it could have been even better if had they followed it up with the continuation of his character because they did. I believe they did have plans of replacing her with Mary Jane, and that's how they were going to kind of develop the character more. But obviously, it was a very emotional scene, one of the most emotional scenes in uh, the Spider-Man, uh, you know, franchise uh, and whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, where this movie falls for me is I think like with like, just like Spider-Man three, um, t a little bit too much on its plate, but the problem is I don't think there's a whole lot of fun to be had in this movie. I, it's not very rewatchable for me. I probably only watched this movie twice, maybe at the most. Um, and it's, it's just not very enjoyable. I really am not a big fan of the Green Goblin arc. And, um, it, like, it, the reason why, like, if, if it was rewatchable, I'd put it up here, but it, it, it just isn't. So, it, it's really unfortunate that this movie goes here, but, uh, it's, it, it is quite underwhelming for me. We got Spider-Man Homecoming. I think this is definitely a solid A-tier movie. I think I'm gonna put it above The Amazing Spider-Man. I enjoy this movie more than The Amazing Spider-Man. I think, for most people, this is probably more fun, just because you're dealing with, a, a very teenage, you know, immature Spider-Man in a different, more fun universe where you have all these different characters and things like that. I actually had a lot of doubts for this movie when it first came out, and it absolutely surprised me. When they introduced the Spider-Man character in Civil War, I was not a big fan of it. I And then I saw they were making a movie around it, and I was like, I I do not like this. Um, just and I think that's just because I was really, really a big Sam Raimi fan, and I didn't want to see them try to pull off another Spider-Man character. And on top of all of that, they're trying to pull off another Spider-Man character in a universe that has all these di other different superheroes, where normally Spider-Man is kind of on his own. He's just kind of the only superhero in his universe. But I think they did a good job at putting him into this universe. I think it, it comes with its inherent flaws, I'm not a huge fan of him being super reliant, especially in this movie and even on Far From Home, even though Iron Man obviously is dead by that point. Um, I'm a, not a big fan of him being sort of this Iron Spider character where he's kind of reliant on Iron Man's, uh, mo uh, Iron Man's advice and his technology and all that kind of stuff. But I think this is a really fun movie. I like the teenage humor, the high school humor, all that kind of stuff. Um, I like Vulture. I think he is definitely up there with my favorite Spider-Man villains just because of his simplicity and you kind of can see where he's coming from. He's just this guy who's trying to make an honest living and who thinks that he's been done wrong. Um, and, um, I think the way that he's introduced as the villain in this movie is really, really shocking and cool at the same time. That, that scene in the, that scene in the car is just uh, one of the one of the best scenes in um in any of the Spider-Man movies just a really really great scene um so Spider-Man Homecoming just the best way to describe it is a very fun movie with very little flaws so it definitely goes in the A tier slash great tier next up we got Venom um and yet again this one was another one where I kind of had doubts for obviously there is quite a bit of negative re reception for Venom in Spider-Man 3 and so seeing that they were making a, a whole new, you know, uh, redoing the character in his own universe and things like that, wasn't really sure. I didn't know if I was going to enjoy this one very much. But it turns out I actually did. I'm going to put this in the fun but flawed tier uh, below Spider-Man 3. I don't think this movie has a whole lot of flaws, though. I think this is a perfectly fine B-tier movie with not a lot of flaws, but also not a lot of amazing things about it that would put it uh, with all these other movies. 
Um, I think, you know, I, I like I like what they did with the Venom character in this movie. I think it is, um, uh, obvi- I think they could have done a better job in Spider-Man 3, obviously, on the Venom character on his villainous side. But I do like this anti-hero side uh, of, of Venom, and I think it works better in this case. I think they did a better job with it. Uh, I like the relationship between Eddie Brock and Venom in this movie and how they're, and their kind of camaraderie and companionship and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it makes for a lot of funny banter and things like that, obviously. Um, yeah, Venom is just a perfectly fine B-tier movie. There's not really a whole lot of good to talk about it. I'm, it's perfectly fine and enjoyable and funny, obviously. And so, yeah, it just goes in the B-tier. We got Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. I'm going to put this one... Um, it's probably probably in the same spot for me around Amazing Spider-Man. I don't think... I think it's pretty interchangeable which one goes above the other. I'll put it above the Amazing Spider-Man for now, but it's pretty interchangeable. I think they're pretty much in the same spot. I know some people obviously would put this in the S tier. I, like I said with my review on the Across the Spider-Verse, I don't think this is an amazing movie. I don't think it is this masterpiece or whatever. But what I do like about this movie... Like I said with Across the Spider-Verse, kind of the same things. Um, the animation, I love how they really, really put a deep focus on that and make that an essential part in, in, of the movie rather than just a background format. So I really love that. And I also love how this movie can appeal to anybody. Um, there's so many different people who love and enjoy this movie and have rewatched it over the years, and they just they just love it. Um, so I love how this movie can appeal to all the other, pretty much any audiences. You know, the other Spider-Man movies usually kind of appear, uh, appeal to more teenage, college, you know, young adult audiences. But this one, because it's animated, can kind of appeal to anybody, young kids, and even adults can get a really, really good kick out of this movie. The Miles Morales character, while being kind of unfamiliar at the time, if you weren't a huge comic book nerd, um, is he was introduced really greatly, and I think people absolutely loved him. Um... And I love his story arc in this movie with his relationship with his uncle um, and um, and his family, uh, which is obviously expanded upon more in Across the Spider-Verse. Overall, really enjoyable movie. It can appeal to anybody, and it's just a really, really good animated Spider-Man movie. Next up, we got Spider-Man Far From Home. I am going to put this in the fun but flawed tier. Um, probably above Spider-Man 3. Um, I think this movie gets a little bit too much slack, um, than, than warranted. Obviously, this movie does have, you know, quite a few flaws, but I think this is a really, really fun movie, and I know there's some people who might even put it lower on their tier list, but I think this is, I, I, I think this is a better movie than people give it credit for. Um... I never really followed the Mysterio character, so I was going into this movie thinking it was going to play out in a completely different way than what it did. I kind of went for the... I, I kind of went for the... I, I was kind of completely... I was completely blind going into this movie with with uh, how I thought it was going to play out. I thought it was just going to play out as, okay, they got this new villain. Doesn't look too threatening, but it looks like they're kind of trying to set up for uh, the, the multiverse era of this movie. They did give some references to it, the Mysterio character talking about the multiverse and how they're on Earth 16, 616 and all that kind of stuff. But this movie is more of a setup for No Way Home um, than, than it is for, you know, a setup for, you know, Phase 4 and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I was going into this movie thinking that the elemental characters or whatever that I saw in the trailers were going to be the villains. Um, and I was like, okay, he'll probably defeat him in the movie, this Mysterio character, I'm not sure what he's here for, but, you know, I guess I'll learn more about him. I had no idea that the Mysterio character was a villain, um, and so, in the middle of the movie, in the climax, where he reveals himself to be a villain, it was, like, there were so many different emotions going through my head. I, I was like, this is super cartoonish, this is very shocking, but it's very, very fun at the same time. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So there's a lot of good for me to, to dish out for this movie. I really, really love the Mysterio character. Um, I don't know if there are other people who are as surprised as me in this movie. Um, I'm sure comic book people probably expected it to go in the way that it did. 
For me, though, I had no idea this movie was going to have that twist in the middle of the movie. So it completely shocked me, and it made my experience for this movie a hell of a lot better than it was for probably most people. And that's probably why they put it lower on the list. But I absolutely love this movie. I love the twist. I think it's one of the best twists in the MCU. <laughs> I know. I, I, you're prob I'm probably sounding stupid because I had no idea who the Mysterio character was before this. But I love the Mysterio villain. Um, I think he's very cartoonish but fun at the same time. I love the drone simulations. I think they're really, really cool at times. And they can provide for some really unique trickery and things like that. Um, uh, the final act of this movie, I think, is really, really awesome as well. Um, but, and I love the, the Edith and the AR and, like, the augmented reality stuff and everything like that. Um, but this movie, w w here's where we get into the negative side of this. Um, and what many people point out of this movie and, uh, to this movie and why they are not a big fan of it. Um, much like with No Way Home which I think is, you know, I'm sure you probably already predicted this, which I think is a better movie than Far From Home. The way that this... To get the fun out of this movie and to get where it ends up, you know, in the second uh, second part, final act of this movie, the way that they have to set it up is pretty cheap and unplausible. Um, the idea that Iron Man is going to... has made these very, very powerful glasses... And decides them to hand them over to a kid who he presumes has passed away at this point. He did it before Endgame and things like that. And on top of that, he's giving it to a young. He's giving this very powerful tool to a young kid. It's it's pretty unplausible. Who he presumes is dead because it's before it's before uh, the the events of Endgame. I believe he did it while he was um, kind of just being a, a family man or whatever. I'm not or like a. He was just kind of, you know, living out in, in the in the woods and kind of out of being an Iron Man, stepping out of the Iron Man character for a while and just kind of enjoying life. Um, I believe he made it around then. So he's making these very powerful glasses for some a kid who he presumed was dead. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and so, yeah, the way that they set this up is very cheap. And then the fact that he just hands him over to Mysterio in the middle of the film and lets him take everything it's like come on and it's yet again another movie where it is somebody who was previously affiliated with tony stark and has scorn for him and so he wants to get revenge on tony stark but it's not even tony stark tony stark is literally dead and he's going after a young kid who has done literally nothing <laughs> to offend uh the mysterio character so yeah this movie has its flaws the way it's set up for all the fun and the stuff that I love about this movie is pretty cheap. Um, I think it gets a little bit too much slack than warranted, but um, overall, I think it's a pretty enjoyable movie. A, a little bit more enjoyable than Spider-Man 3, and um, and uh, that's why it goes in this particular spot. Next up, we got Venom, Let There Be Carnage. I'm going to put this in the underwhelming tier. It It sucks to put it there because I think... For what this movie has, at like what this movie provides, I think is is really good, but it just had so much more potential, and I could see it in the movie. Honestly, or obviously, the Carnage character uh, is very, very you know cool, fun, and I think there could have been so much more fun that could have been had in this movie. There's really not a whole lot to talk about because this movie is so short. It's only an hour and a half long, like an hour forty minutes. So obviously, I think this movie is a half hour too short. And also, I really, really wish they just would have went for it all, um, you know, just dropped the PG-13 rating and just let Carnage go all out in this movie. And I think it would have been a lot better. I think they still would have made a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of mo movie uh, money as well. This movie made, I th believe it was like four hundred million or something like that. I still think they would have made a lot of money even if they dropped the PG-13 rating. You know, despite you know maybe some parents not wanting to take their kids to the to the movie just because of the blood and gore, but. I think it would have. I think it would have definitely enhanced the quality of this movie a lot better had this movie been longer and we were able to go all out with the Carnage character. But I think for what this movie provides, it's enough to be a rewatchable, fun movie. I think it's it's perfectly fine. There's nothing bad about it with like the Amazing Spider-Man two, but it is certainly underwhelming just because this movie had so much more potential. It it probably could have been up to 
you know, the fun, fun but flawed, like the top of that had it just gone all out and not really worried about its rating and things like that. So Venom, Let There Be Carnage, perfectly fine, fun movie it, and, and rewatchable, more, certainly more rewatchable than The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So it goes in the underwhelming tier. Next up, we got Spider-Man No Way Home, and this is a movie that just puts a smile on my face. I don't think this is as great as Spider-Man 2. I think it's pretty tight between the two. But it is going to go up in that top S tier. This is definitely a very much a pizza time movie. Now, I'll just get this out of the way real quick. Yes, the way that this movie is set up to get all the fun that is delivered in this movie and the fan service and all that is very, very cheap. I think it's even cheaper than the Spider-Man Far From Home setup, honestly. Um, but I think the the benef or like the benefits of that cheap setup outweigh the cost. I think... With all the for all the fan service and everything like that that we have in this movie, I think it is enough to outweigh the costs of having to set it up in a very cheap way. I I think that scene where <clears throat> um, he wants everybody to forget about him and and all that kind of stuff, but he has to make these certain boundaries and things like that is one of the most absurd f mo our scenes in the MCU. They, like, severely dumb down Doctor Strange in this movie and come up, come up with this BS spell. I, I, I just think it's complete BS. Like, there's no way he has a spell that can make everybody forget things. It's just, it's complete BS. It, 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 so they just dumb down Doctor Strange and, you know, then messes up and it opens up the multiverse and all this kind of stuff. The setup is very cheap. I get it. But I think... Like I said, I think the benefits outweigh the costs, and if you would have told me that, you know, would you want to pay, um, uh, you know, would, would you want to pay, like, $100 to have, uh, like, you know, how do you want to say it? Like, would you want to pay $100 to have a really, really fun movie at, you know, like, to have a really, really fun movie, or do you want a kind of mediocre movie for free? That's, that's kind of, that's kind of, like what what you're handed with in this movie and overall i would take the hundred dollars to get the you know the the two different or the three spider-mans all together and all fighting the the sinister six the six or whatever i i, I would have paid i definitely would have went with paying the hundred dollars than getting another mediocre spider-man movie because we've just had so many spider-man movies so i think this movie was um just an absolute you know fun just fan service i think the, out of all the fan service movies that have came out over the past you know few years and things like that i think this one does it the best does it right even though the setup is kind of cheap and the fan like the cameos and things like that have a purpose um you know toby toby mcguire and andrew garfield serve the purpose of developing the the tom holland spider-man character um and i think it's amazing to see how how much he changes from the beginning of this movie to where he's wanting everybody to forget him out for, forget about him um to the ending of the movie where he be, he just kind of becomes a man <laughs> towards the end of the movie it feels like and he is starting a new life and a, a new era and this movie sets up that new era of this spider-man character that i'm really excited to see where it goes from the, then on the Aunt May death, I don't know. I felt like it was kind of forced into there. Um, it was obviously emotional. Aunt May was a very fun character. You know, certainly more fun than the Sam Raimi Aunt May just because she's kind of younger, more hip, and things like that. She was a very fun character. I just don't think it was all that emotional, and it kind of felt forced in there. But I get it's a part of the Spider-Man's character and story and all that kind of stuff, so I can understand why they had to do it. Um... And I, I really like Green Goblin in this movie. I think William Defoe does just as good as he did um, 20 years ago when he did Spider-Man 2002. Um, and I think, you know, every every villain that's introduced in this movie kind of gets their moment in the light, you know, some more than others. But I think it works out really, really well. I, I, you know, I would be, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want this movie despite the cheap setup. So, um, yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home. And it just, it absolutely puts a smile on my face. It goes in the S tier. Well, it sucks to go from super excited to um, super disappointed uh, when we get to this next movie, Morbius. Oh, boy. Um, it feels like it's been so long since I've talked about this movie and the memes and everything like that. 
Yeah, it, it it unfortunately goes in in this tier. Um, I don't think I don't think this movie is is as bad as some people put it out to be. It's not the absolute worst Marvel movie or like Marvel produced movie I've I've seen, but it's 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 not that good. Uh, when I saw the trailers for it, didn't really convince me to didn't really can you know make me all that excited. But I just kind of saw it because I felt like I had to. And I had no idea this movie was going to get <laughs> um, all the hate that it did and all the memes and things like that. Um, yeah, this movie is definitely very boring. Not rewatchable at all. Um, I think there's some... Th like, there's a few things I can cherry pick out of there that I kind of like. It has some kind of pre-MCU vibes and elements to it that I think are okay. Um, kind of the more, like, darker elements to it. Um, that are fine. I think the the relationship between Michael and his uh, and Milo um, in this movie, I think, is it, it's kind of interesting. Um, but that's like that's kind of it. That's all I can dish out. There's no like action sequences that are really really great or enjoyable. Um, the final act is like very very dark and hard to tell what's going on. Kind of like with uh, with the first Venom movie, which I actually forgot to point that out, with with the villain, the villain in uh, the first Venom movie, very hard to tell. <laughs> like at the, like because it, they had like such similar character like colors, it was kind of hard to tell what was going on. Kind of similar thing here in Morbius. Yeah, uh, there's there's not a whole lot to dish out in this movie. It's just bland, boring, not rewatchable at all. And there's not just not a lot of whole good stuff to to dish out of this. I don't think this movie is terrible. It's just very, very bland um, and just distasteful. So um, it goes in, in the bottom tier. And I'm glad we're going to end on a good note. We got Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I'm going to put this in the great tier um, above Into the Spider-Verse, but not above Homecoming just yet because obviously we haven't completed the animated Spider-Man trilogy or what is presumed to be a trilogy as of right now. Um, so this is definitely not a complete story. But for what we got out of Across the Spider-Verse, it gets me very excited excited for what comes up next. Um, this is a really, really great movie. Um, and they push the boundaries of animation even more than they did in the first um, Into the Spider-Verse movie. The emotions are really good in this movie. There's a lot of really funny, enjoyable moments in this movie. You get everything out of this movie. And it doesn't feel like it's just bouncing between tones uh, constantly. Everything feels natural. It flows together really, really nicely. Um, I think they do, they do a really great job at developing Gwen's character in this movie. And Into the Spider-Verse, she kind of felt more like just another one of the Spider-Mans in the Spider-Man family. But now she kind of feels like a main essential character in, um, in this animated uh, uh, trilogy. Um, and so I really like what they did with her character. Um, and I like many of the different Spider-Mans. There's a few that, like, especially Spider-Man 2099... Um, I'm not a huge fan of of him right now. I'm not sure if they're going, uh, like, bringing him down kind of a, a like, you know, uh, preparing him to be a villain maybe in the next movie. So I don't like how he's... I'm not really a big fan of his character in this movie um, where he's talking about how he's this anomaly and, yeah, you're the problem and all this kind of stuff. It seems like they're going on, like... They're kind of pushing him towards being a villain in the next movie, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So, I don't know. We'll see in the next movie. There's so much, like, all the things that I could point out that I don't like about this movie, I'm not 100% sure about it yet because this is part one of part two. This is not a complete story. So, we'll see what happens with the 2999 character. But as of right now, I'm not a huge fan of the direction that they're going. I, I think it would be really cool if he turns into a villain, but right now he's just kind of at this of this, at this, like, weird spot where he's, like, sort of on their side, but sort of seems like he's gonna turn on them at any moment. But Across the Spider-Verse, very, very fun. I think it does the multiverse even better than Multiverse of Madness did, which is saying something. And, obviously, the animation is pushed even further than Into the Spider-Verse. This is a really, really great movie. And, uh, that's all I gotta say about it. That is it for the tier list. I know I might have dragged that on a little bit longer than I should have, but uh, I finally got that out of the way. It took a while to get it, but um, um, I'll try to have this out as soon as possible. Um, let me know of any video ideas in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of the setup 
and stay tuned for the future content we got obviously the new transformers movie like i said gonna be watching it tonight and we got the flash coming up next week and a few other movies that are on my radar so stay tuned and that should be it other than that like and subscribe guys and i will see you next time